Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing a set of these new dynamic sequential LEDs. These are super cool. They're the only ones on the market that combine sequential technology and LEDs. A super bright DRL combined with a sequential turn signal from SoCal Moto Gear. And today, we're going to show you how to install them. The tools needed for this job are a medium tip Phillips screwdriver, a Phillips with a large tip, and a 10 millimeter combination wrench. Let's begin by removing the rear view mirrors on each side. Now underneath your mirror housing is a single Phillips screw. Be careful when you remove this because it's very easy to strip out the head of this screw. Just kind of start at the bottom actually is the best way to do it. Start at the bottom and you can see it's going to lift right out. And if you look on the back of the mirror, you'll see the only thing holding it in, there's a couple little tabs here. This is where the screw is on the bottom that holds the mirror in. Push the mirror assembly down and forward and this will reveal the wires behind the rubber boot. Locate the blue power connector for the turn signal and disconnect it. Now on the left hand side of the bike, this connector may be orange. Twist the bulb assembly to the left one quarter turn and remove. The mirror housing and the turn signal assembly are held in place with these three screws. Go ahead and remove these using the medium tip Phillips screwdriver and then the housing will fall forward where you can then remove the assembly. With the screws removed you can now reach in and grab the turn signal assembly and remove it. Use this opportunity to clean the inside of the mirror housing with a damp cloth. If you look at the left hand side turn signal assembly you'll notice two wire harnesses coming out of the rear of the unit. The longer one is a sync cable that will connect to the other turn signal assembly. The shorter connector is your turn signal connector and then the longer white wire is a battery power connector. You'll see two white connectors on the end. You can feed the wires through the opening in the frame as shown here and then slide the turn signal assembly into the mirror housing so that it fits just exactly like the one you removed earlier. You can route the wires through an opening in the plastic guard shown here. Now there's just enough room if you wiggle this guard around you'll see there's an, uh, it will make an opening that those wires will fit through and you ultimately want those wires to sit in the channel that you see cut into the plastic frame. To complete the installation, we'll need to remove the front windshield garnish. Release the rubber gasket from around the mirror and push the mirror down and forward. You should now be able to locate a single 10 millimeter bolt on each side. It's a good idea to stuff a rag inside this area so that when you remove this bolt it doesn't accidentally fall down into the shelter. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, go ahead and loosen this bolt enough so that you can then finish removing it using your fingers. There is a washer attached to it also. You just want to be careful not to drop these down into the shelter and that's kind of why we have that rag in place. Once the bolt's removed, you'll notice a rubber grommet. Go ahead and remove that and set it aside as well. Move both windscreen height levers in the up position. Release the rubber tabs on the mirror boots from the front garnish. 
Now on each side you can lift the garnish tab off of the post and that will release it uh, on each side and then there's simply two grommets that hold the garnish in place on the very front toward the bottom. Now you're ready to connect the turn signal power cable to the blue connector on the right hand side of the bike. Go ahead and repeat this process on the left side of the bike. Remember that the connector is orange on the left hand side of the bike. Now connect the two halves of the sink cable as shown. You can tuck this cable up under some of the pieces underneath the garnish, or you could even use electrical tape to tape it down to keep it from sticking out. To gain access to the bike's power connector, we need to remove this plastic trim piece and the glove box. The trim piece is held in place with two large clips at the bottom and a series of smaller clips along the left side. Remove the first clip by getting your fingers underneath the lower left side and pull up firmly, then work to the inside of the bike to release the second clip. Now work your way up the side and release the smaller clips. You'll notice a small tab at the very front of the piece that fits into the front of the shelter. The glove box is held in place with four plastic pins. You can release these pins by pushing down in the center of the pin with a screwdriver or pointed object. You'll hear a small click. Then you can use your fingernail to lift the pin out of place. Once you get it out, you'll be able to see how the pin holds the plastic parts in place. Remove all four pins and then you can lift out the glove box. Now underneath the glove box, you should be able to locate a red power connector as shown. If you place a small flashlight inside this glove box area and look from above next to the rear view mirror, you'll easily see the opening where you can feed these two white power connectors down into that glove box area. It's actually underneath the glove box. And then use your hands to pull them through and connect one of these connectors to that red power connector you located earlier. Now, the other white connector is not used at this time. It's just simply there in case you need to connect something else to your bike's power supply in the future. To reinstall the glove box, we need to reset these little push pins. The way you do that is by pushing up from the bottom. You'll see the top kind of pop up. And then after you've set the glove box back into place, you place the push pins in the hole and then push down on that center post, and that will lock the pin into place. And go ahead and do that for all four pins. To reinstall the plastic trim piece, you start by inserting the tab at the very front of the shelter and then work your way down in reverse order to the way you removed it. Put the little clips into place first and then when you get down to the bottom, push firmly to set the two larger clips. If you do not already have an LED flasher installed on your Goldwing, you can watch a specific video on how to do this. An LED flasher was included in your kit, so click here to watch that video now before putting the bike back together. <music> to reinstall the front garnish, make sure the two plastic posts are inserted into the rubber grommets on the front of the bike. There are additional grommets on the side that posts will also fit down into. Make sure that the mounting tabs on each side of the garnish are over the posts as shown in the picture. Reinstall the rubber washers around the mounting post. Next, reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt that we removed earlier. Next, reinstall the rear view mirrors into the housing. Make sure the rubber tabs surrounding the rubber boot are inserted back into the front garnish. <laughs> 